have an office of about 120 people. It's quite international. We've got projects in uh, quite a lot of projects in Asia, some in uh, northern Europe, uh, Middle East, and uh, in the States. Roughly two thirds of our work is in is in the United Kingdom, mostly in England. Um, we have quite a lot of work in in London, um, but also we do work uh, for universities, Oxford, Cambridge, Exeter, uh, and a number of other universities. We do schools, we work on museums, and we work around the world on, on bridges. I would like to say it's life, but it isn't life. It's, it's actually something that everybody needs but they don't actually get um, it's so much more than shelter but it has to be shelter as well um, and to me it's 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 the real difference is between architecture and building is is something to do with the spatial quality it's an emotional thing it's, it's design as opposed to a mere accident of building. I think architecture is particularly important these days because with um, more than half the people living in cities, we're inevitably involved with the quality of the built environment. So um, once you start thinking about the built environment as opposed to nature, then you've got to find a way of dealing with people's emotional, physical requirements and psychological requirements. And I think architecture has that ability to lift people's spirits, uh, to make them feel good about themselves and about the, the places they live in. Well, I think it's quite interesting that the, the you know, even the idea of the architect, architects as, as a profession, actually it's relatively new. It doesn't go back all that far. And you know, artists and architects were tradesmen, you know, not, you know, only a few hundred years ago. Um, and I think it is important to remember that one is actually serving society. Um, and. I think there is a tendency these days for architects to be seen as sort of superstars or rock stars, which is, I think, is a slightly odd phenomenon in a way. I mean, it's great that the, the profile of, uh, of architecture can be, um, you know, recognized more. But really, our role is to improve the quality of people's lives more than anything else. We see each project as an opportunity, really, to explore ideas, and sometimes that involves innovation. Um, the ideas come are very specific, so they come from the particular brief and the site. And sometimes that leads us to explore new materials, uh, maybe new structures, might be uh, um, form, uh, now we have the opportunities of exploring form and space in new ways. So inevitably there's an element of innovation in our work because of the way we approach each project. I'm a great believer as an architect in, in the, what I think Le Corbusier called the spirit of the new. Um, that in a way that trying to find new ways of doing things is is something is a, is a strong motivator it's something that drives you on but actually one doesn't seek innovation for its own sake it's just more to me it's more to do with creativity and the creativity can be an artistic one or it can be a technical one and that's one of the great things about architecture is it could be either of those or both of those um, so innovations it's in but it's not, as I say, it's not, you don't set out to innovate. It's a product of one's own creativity. And 
I recognize that networking is very important and probably don't do anything like enough of it, but um, in a way part of networking can be visiting universities and, and giving lectures here, there and everywhere. Um, one could do too much of that as well, but that sort of spreads the word and, and generates interest in, in one's work, but also, uh, you know, I think it's really enjoyable to um, to give talks to students to inspire the next generation um, of architects. And the other thing, of course, is is there's a form of networking which is through publications, um, you know, or on the web, you know, making sure that one's uh, that people are aware of one's work. So. I think we've always wanted to let our work speak for itself in a way rather than, you know, we've never gained a job from the golf club. It doesn't work like that for us. Curiously, I think we were a little bit slow to, to, to exploit the internet, but um, we have a website, obviously, now, and um, we, we try and do more and more on the website and keep refreshing it. And I think we're, quite, we're, we're really using it quite well at the moment where we're putting news items on the website and, and we also have extracts from things that we've written, articles that we've written. So there's a lot of reference material on our projects about ourselves uh, and we monitor the number of hits that the website gets. So we're finding that um, our practice is known around the world far more than we thought it might be, actually. Um, so for disseminating information, it's just an extraordinary thing. The other side of it, of course, is the way that it's transformed product research. You know, when that previously you had to have a library in the office, a technical library. Now, all that information, every manufacturer and supplier's information is on the internet. So it's a great resource, though personally I spend very little time on the internet. I don't, I don't seem to use it very much, um, but it is used widely in the office. I've been amazed uh, when I've given lectures in far-flung places that people have looked up our website and have even read some of the um, the articles and some of the uh, even because we put lectures or essays on the website as well people are able to talk about aspects of, of one's philosophy in quite a lot of detail so clearly it's a fantastic tool um, and I think that it is possible to be a sort of uh, a, a, an architect that his work almost the, the physical aspect of the work isn't as important as the uh, the sort of um, uh, internet aspect of the work but for us it we're concerned with building and um, you know we like the physical aspect of architecture we like getting our hands dirty and getting on with things So I go back to uh, something I said earlier, which was uh, that architecture bridges art and science, and I think you've got to keep both of those going, really. So for a young person, often in schools, they have a choice whether they go down the arts route or the science route. I think you've got to have both, really. I, like uh, Jim, I think that uh, learning to draw is absolutely essential. And uh, I think perhaps doing a pre-dip um, arts course is, is very good intro to architecture. But equally, some of the um, some of the best architects working for us are brilliant mathematicians. You know, they and they have uh, they can work things out, uh, and that an understanding of geometry is is incredibly important now because we are, we have the ability to explore new geometries so for young people starting up i think i i think it's very important that they uh, have computer skills uh, and a fair amount of technical knowledge but i think they've got to um, they've got to learn the visual skills as well 
which does mean learning to draw and maybe even painting as well. I think students studying architecture now pretty much have to learn how to use computers. It's, it's, it's inevitable, actually, that when they get to an office they'll need to use a computer. So they'll be doing 3D modelling and so on. But what I would encourage them to do is to learn to draw by hand, to sketch, and to sketch out ideas, to use, to, 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 to the mere act of holding a pencil and drawing an idea, you can communicate so much information with so few lines um, by hand, and you cannot do it on the computer. So as a way of developing ideas, I think it's, it's, there's a real danger that it could be left behind. And the other aspect is to study the history of architecture, um, to go right back and to really understand um, you know, how things have evolved over time and to go and visit buildings, to visit buildings by other architects, old and new. Well, when I first started up, someone advised me that the first 10 years are the worst. And I think it's fair enough, actually, uh, because we uh, formed a partnership together and then we, we now have a, a company with uh, seven directors. Um, so we have, we have a uh, management system uh, which pretty much works, which deals with the business side of things, management and uh, the architecture. But I think for people starting up, they've got to have some kind of business sense that goes with their um, with their uh, creative skills in architecture. You've got to probably learn a little bit of networking skills in order to uh, meet the right people. But I think at the end of the day, um, you have to make the most of what you've got. So if you get, what, it might only be a small job, but if you do it well, it becomes a very good advertisement for, for your skills and uh, you can build on that. I think the other thing that they have to be very careful with is to not get stereotyped into doing one thing only. Um, because one does see that occasionally, you know, that they do something very well and then they get asked to do that again and again and again. And we've always found that we've become specialists in lots of different things. We've been quite careful never to focus on only one aspect of, uh, you know, of architecture, one thing. Um, but I think above all, as architects, you've got to persevere and you have to accept the fact that you're going to have to live like a pauper when you start and just keep going.